everyone welcome back to the homestead in today's video we're going to share a sampling of the harvest that we've been bringing in from the garden in this month of august here in the missouri ozarks and we'll also share a little bit about how we're using the harvest normally the month of august for us here is not very bountiful <laughs> the garden seems to really dry up and it's typically very hot and dry through the month of august so we don't harvest that much but this year's different We've had more rain. It's actually really nice and cool right now. There's a breeze and we've been bringing in so much from the garden. It's a huge blessing that we thank Yah for. August is melon month for us. That's something that we've always had no matter how hot and dry it is. We've always gotten our melons and watermelons and stuff in August. So this year we're growing a few different uh, varieties of watermelon. Uh, our all time favorite is Orange Glow and it's got an orange flesh. We like that one. We've already harvested and eaten some of that. Yeah. Uh, then we're growing Sugar Baby, which this year we only had one plant. It didn't do great, but we still have a melon. Yeah, I don't think we, we didn't water it enough, really, yeah. because we have just one sprinkler back there and it didn't get it very well, and so the plant died. Yeah. And then uh, Greystone is a type, a new variety that you planted. So we're excited to actually try that one maybe today for the first time and see how mm -hmm. that is. And then we also just have like a cantaloupe style melon as well called Chansonese, I believe, and that one's really delicious. And it's so fun because when you go over where the plant is, you can just smell <laughs> the aroma of the melon. Yeah. <laughs> it's really nice. And then I also have my um, cantaloupe. It's like a vining cantaloupe over on the trough. Oh yeah, we haven't harvested any of those yet, but she has another cantaloupe variety growing and it's got a lot of little furry babies on it. <laughs> so we're looking forward to harvesting maybe some of those at the end of the month, hopefully. Yeah. Uh, the next thing we've been harvesting a lot of is tomatoes. We didn't really intend for this to be a big tomato year. Uh, we usually just grow a little bit of tomatoes for fresh eating. I do eventually want to can some, uh, but I think we're gonna be canning this year. <laughs> oh yeah, we've been getting a lot of tomatoes. Yes, Esther planted uh, the extra plants that I had that didn't fit in this kitchen garden in a new bed out in the main crop garden. And they're just, every day she's bringing in armloads of tomatoes. So we've made a couple batches of salsa that we're just putting in the freezer. But I'm hoping that soon we can actually do some water bath canning of salsa and that way we can store it in our pantry and have it through the winter. And the last batch that we made extra actually made all by herself. So she knows how to make salsa now. Um, just have to teach you how to do the water bath part of it and then you can be our salsa maker. <laughs> Was it fun for you to make the salsa? Yeah. Yeah. I don't particularly enjoy canning and so if she ends up liking it then that's wonderful. <laughs> she can do all the canning. Tomatoes are one thing that I do can and will continue to can. Hopefully in the future we can do all of our tomato needs um, from our homestead here uh, because tomatoes are one of those things that when you heat them up in the canning process it actually increases some of the nutrients, um, specifically the lycopene that's in them. Uh, canning does destroy the vitamin C and that's why a lot of things we choose to ferment instead so that way we preserve the vitamin C. But with tomatoes, at least there's some things that increase nutrition-wise when you can, and so that to me makes it worth it. Next one is squash. We have three different types of summer squash. We have zucchini rampicante, which is one of our favorites. We love it. Yeah, we love the zucchini rampicante. It's one that you can have fresh, or you can leave it on the vine and it gets a hard skin just like a winter squash, and it's a fairly decent winter squash as well. Yep. And the next is zucchini, which is just a normal variety. It's called raven. Mm -hmm. And then the last one, but definitely not the least, <laughs> is um, early prolific straight neck. Yeah, which is a yellow variety. Yeah, which we've been getting a ton of it. <laughs> yeah. We were just pretty much eating it every day fresh, but it got to where there was more than we could keep up with, so we started giving it away. And even giving it away, we still have too much. So we're starting to grate it and put it in freezer bags so that we can use it in like zucchini bread and brownies and things like that once we get soup. our, and soup, mm -hmm. once we get our cook stove going again. Yeah. And then next is our winter squash, which we have two varieties. Um, we have burpee butternut, <laughs> which is kind of a little one. Yeah, and that one uh, we did a little harvest of already. Yeah. 
and then the other one is one that's actually we don't know what it is. It's supposed to be Waltham, Waltham, Waltham butternut, but it's not. Definitely not. What do you think of that giant squash? It's huge. It is huge. It's winter squash. It's winter squash, yes. I tried getting seeds from Home Depot for the first time, and so one of those seed packs was Waltham butternut, because I was out of them, and it's not Waltham butternut. We had lots of people um, commenting on what variety they think it is. I'm still not 100% sure what it is, though. <laughs> I just hope it's good, because we're gonna have a lot of it. Okay, next we've got green beans coming in, and we have a couple different varieties right now. Our favorite purple pull beans, and then provider bush beans, and I planted a lot more bush beans than normal this year because I was hoping to be able to have a lot of extra to ferment and so thankfully um, that's the case and we've been eating them fresh, <laughs> giving them away and we just now started um, also making some ferments and the thing I really like about fermenting vegetables, well there's lots of reasons I like to ferment vegetables, <laughs> you don't need any kind of special equipment or jars. We often just reuse um, jars from store-bought goods like our Bubby's pickles and sauerkraut that we often get, we'll reuse those jars. So it doesn't take any kind of special equipment and it preserve, not only preserves all of the nutrition in the vegetables, but it increases a lot of the nutrition. The vitamin C levels in fermented vegetables is fantastic. You get all the probiotics to help with the gut <laughs> and they're just delicious. Um, some people have a hard time getting used to eating the sour vegetables that have been fermented but once you get used to that sour flavor you actually crave it huh? Yeah I've always liked them. I would you've be always able liked to... it? Well it, normally when you eat too much sauerkraut it can make you not feel good because it's like an overload of the nutrients but for me since I've eaten it so much I can just eat bowls and bowls of it and I love it. Yes, she loves the fermented vegetables. The beans are Caleb's favorite fermented vegetables so um, hopefully we can get a whole bunch of those made for him and everybody else. <laughs> um, so the next thing that we've been harvesting is our last onions and last potatoes. I'm going to be making some big changes next year in the way of onions and potatoes. In the past I have grown the bulk of our onions and potatoes in the early spring and so then they're harvested in the summertime but I'm having trouble keeping them preserved well in our pantry that is super humid. We don't have air conditioning in our house and so the inside of our house is just about as humid as the outside. Um, so even if I dry the onions and the potatoes really, really well, once I put them away into our pantry, they start to have issues and I've just pulled out a whole thing of potatoes where a couple of them are already rotted and so I'm having to go through that mess and hopefully save most of them. But so anyway, in the future I'm planning on just planting a little bit of onions and potatoes in the spring so that we can have some through the summer. But doing the big bulk planting of onions and potatoes a little later into the spring or early summer even so that when we harvest them the humidity levels are already starting to drop and by the time we store them in our house hopefully it'll be dry enough that they'll preserve well and get us through the winter. So yeah. it's just one of the off-grid challenges that we face here. We're still learning how to adjust to all these different environmental circumstances. <laughs> Cucumbers are the next one. Right now we're not getting enough really to pickle or anything, so we're just eating them fresh. And our favorite way to eat them is with some sour cream and salt on top. Yeah, that's been a favorite for a long time. Years now, I think. Just slice them up, put some sour cream and salt on top, and they're so good. <laughs> yeah. um, there are a lot, a lot of little baby cucumbers still on our plant, which is amazing. Normally our cucumber plants are dead by now. Um, so maybe we'll get to make a couple jars of pickles. That'd be nice. Yeah. We'll see. Um, and this year we're growing straight eight, Market Moore 76, Arkansas Little Leaf, and is there one other variety? Muncher. Muncher, maybe? I think that, that one died. That one know. died. Muncher died. <laughs> so the one that's still going... It was munched. Yeah. The one cucumber that's still doing great is the straight eight. So I think we'll be keep we'll keep that variety. Mm -hmm. Keep it going. Uh, we are starting to harvest peppers, which we've been able to add to our salsa. And I don't really even know all the varieties of our peppers we're growing right now. So we have a couple of varieties of hot peppers. One is the lemon drop. That's my husband's favorite. Um, we have a jalapeno 
and then for sweet peppers we've got a miniature red bell and what else a couple other varieties i can't remember i'm allergic to peppers and don't eat them so i have a hard time remembering what's what in any case we've got about five or six varieties of peppers and we've been adding them to our salsa so that's been fun next are the snacks in the garden and first will be the mexican sour gherkins yeah and we can snack on those all day long and they still want to be gone. <laughs> yeah, Mexican sour gherkins, they just come back every year. They self-seed, almost like a weed every year. I have to really thin them out and I never thin them quite enough. So <laughs> they're just this huge viney bush. So then what's the other snack in the garden right now? <laughs> yeah, the next one is ground cherries, which are delicious. They're more like little candies, but <laughs> anyways, we would be able to snack on those pretty much all day long if the turkeys didn't get them. The little baby turkeys, they get out yeah. and we eat them. We've got a few baby turkeys cruising in the garden right now because we're the turkey yard is right next to our kitchen garden and they can sneak through the little crack in the gate still. They're just small enough to do that. <laughs> and it's actually nice. They don't do much damage other than steal some ground cherries once in a while. And then the other snack is cherry tomatoes. Sunrise bumblebee, one of our absolute favorites, um, black cherry. We have a, mis a mystery variety that we got from a friend and they're the tiniest, cutest little tomatoes. <laughs> Those small are fun. Ground cherry. Yep. And then we've got, I'm not sure what variety it is, it keeps coming back wild every year in various places and we will let some of them grow. It's just a common red cherry tomato of some sort. <laughs> yeah. Got a neighbor mowing in the background, so apologize for that, but they gotta do it, so. <laughs> the other thing that we're harvesting that it's not something that's talked about very often, I guess, in a harvesting video, but that's seeds. August is our big, big, big seed harvesting month. I think there's been a couple questions come in about harvesting seeds, so probably in next week's video we'll talk more about it. But for us it's a good month because it's typically pretty dry, and for harvesting seeds you want it to be dry. Another thing we harvest um, pretty much every month of, of the growing season, but definitely still in August as well, is herbs. And right now we've got basil galore, especially cinnamon basil. Um, it just grows fantastic here, so abundant. So we're harvesting the cinnamon basil mostly for tea. And then also lemon balm right now is one that we can use for tea. There's all kinds of other herbs that we use fresh, like thyme. I like to put on our chicken when I do a roast chicken. We have oregano, parsley, rosemary, just a whole lot of herbs. And I don't use them all every day or even regularly, but it's nice that most of them come back every year. That way I know I have them if I need them. <laughs> They're always available. And then last thing I'll talk about today just briefly is um, Piper Sudan grass. It's my first year trying to grow it and I'm growing it for a couple different reasons. One is weed suppression. The other major reason is because I want to use it as a mulch. So I did a first little harvest of our patch of Sudan grass there and I cut it up and dry, I'm drying it out on the top of our root cellar. And my plan is to use that in the place of straw in our strawberry beds. We've had a lot of issues with weeds in our strawberry beds. So I'm hoping dried Sudan grass, it'll help smother out some of the weeds and also help keep the strawberries above the ground so they don't rot as much. So we'll see, it's totally experimental and we'll probably share more about that in next week's video as well. Thanks for joining us in the garden today, and we would love it if you would leave a comment below of what you're growing in your garden if you have one. Thank you, as always, to our patrons who make these videos possible. We love and appreciate you guys so much. Until next time, we pray blessings over you and yours. And whatever, and whatever you, you do, do, do it with, with your, your whole heart. heart.